All right, welcome everybody to uh, today's MPUY general body meeting. I know it is President's Day. However, the city does not uh, view President's Day as a day for us to take off. So we are here today. So I appreciate everybody coming and joining in. Um, first, I'd like to start that I do have an open door policy. So if there's anything that you would like to reach out to the executive board, please email us at secretarympuy at gmail.com. You can also find the general body meeting handout and uh, materials on the Google Drive link that is in the chat. I will drop it once again for you. This includes this month's agenda, any materials that are pertinent to uh, the month leading up to our next meeting, as well as last month's meeting minutes. Uh, if you are a city representative, city official, or a representative of um, the officials, uh, please leave your information in the chat so we can call on you in the order that you have been placed in there. Um, <clears throat> a few housekeeping rules. Please stay muted. If you would like to speak, use the raise hand reaction, which is on the bottom of the screen. You'll be called to the floor in the order you are presented. If you speak out of turn, you will be muted as it is a violation of Robert's rules of order. For those of you that are on a phone, it is star nine to raise your hand and star six to mute or unmute. Um, I do also recommend that you use reactions that are nonverbal remarks, uh, just to make comment of um, plus or you know, against or uh, uh, sorry to um, express any nonverbal uh, uh, towards any of our presenters. <clears throat> there will be a survey at the closeout of the meeting where members can submit questions or comments to our executive board, and we will respond to those accordingly to the uh, within the next following week. Let me share my screen for our minutes to approve those. On the screen, you see our minutes from last month. I'll scroll through them real quick. You can also find these minutes on our MPU website, mpuy.org. Our minutes are very thorough. Thank you very much to our secretary. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Seconded by Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Jacob Mills. If there are any in opposition, please speak or raise your hand. Okay, as I see none, we will approve the minutes upon unanimous consent. To Approve the agenda. Here is the agenda on the screen. I will make the motion to approve the agenda for this to, for tonight. Second. Uh, who was the first that second that? I'm uh, sorry. It was Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Seconded. If you are in opposition, please speak or raise your hand. As I see none, we have a unanimous consent. Thank you. I will leave the agenda on the screen for all to see throughout the, me the meeting. Uh, moving on to our next item is reports from city departmental representatives. Uh, <clears throat> I will give you two minutes. Uh, please try to hold your comments until after they are done with their reports. Uh, if it does not pertain to the general body, please limit, leave them in the chat so the representative can answer you directly. Any unanswered questions, we will email directly to the representative to contact you or we will contact you with an answer as well. First, I have Major Riker. You may have the floor. Good evening, everybody. I'll just go through uh, crime for last month. Uh, just as a comparison. So we had one homicide compared to zero in December that was at 187 Maori Avenue inside the villages of Carver. That was a 33 year old that was uh, unfortunately shot and killed. The suspect is already arrested in reference to that case. Uh, five aggravated assaults compared to one in December. Two robberies compared to two in December. 
five burglaries compared to three in December, 14 auto thefts compared to 22 in December. Out of those 14, the high is uh, still Kias and Hyundais uh, with eight of those 14. Uh, seven larceny from autos compared to 13 in December. And five uh, larceny non-autos compared to 10 in December, which gives us a total of 39 compared to 52 in December. Um, I'll just go over real quickly. Uh, probably some of in the neighborhood are aware that there was a, a shooting earlier this morning uh, at 1660 Jonesboro Road, which is the Little Bear. Um, I'll just give you a brief overview of what I can speak about. Um, so the incident did begin inside the store. Um, it led to the, uh, the death of a 33-year-old, uh, I'm sorry, 32-year-old male. Um, we are not currently seeking anyone that we haven't already spoken to. Uh, the, uh, the incident is obviously actively uh, under investigation. So uh, hopefully we'll have that um, wrap, wrapped up pretty quickly. And then I'm, I'm just available for any other uh, questions anyone has. I would like to hand over to Gloria Hawkins as she is our public safety chair uh, to comment uh, since they do go hand in hand with Major Riker. Gloria. Thanks, Major Riker. Major Riker and I spoke at length today and um, Major Riker, uh, would you kind of recap for the uh, body what 1660 has been for the last, let's say six to 12 months, what kind of profile it has created and what arrest, well, go ahead. So the, the location has been um, an area that we see uh, uh, obviously an increase in narcotics activity surrounding that address. And that could be on property or out in front of the property on the street, sidewalk, et cetera. Um, I can give you a quick rundown of the last, the last three months. Um, of what we've seen. So we break things down just based on calls for service, which basically means either the Atlanta police initiating something there or somebody actually calling 911. So we've had 87 calls to service at that address in the last three months, uh, of which 24 of it were actually someone calling 911. Uh, and then obviously the remaining 63 were self-initiated by us. There have been 12 arrests at that location. Um, and they kind of run the gamut, but most of them are narcotics related. Uh, four firearms were taking off of people at that location as well. So you're gonna have either wanted people, uh, narcotics related, uh, gun related crimes out of those 12. Um, if you just take what we call 307 as, as a beat itself, which incorporates uh, pretty much the majority of the NPU, uh, you're looking at 185 arrests um, during that same time period with 46 of those 185 narcotics related. Obviously that, that expands out a lot more than just 1660, but that's just a quick overview of, uh, of what we're up to. Last month, we experienced a robbery at that location. Is that correct? We had uh, some issues up and down that street, all the way stretching down to where uh, 1634 Lakewood is. Some of those end up actually being true robberies. Some of those are, um, let's just say the, the information that we initially respond to changes after the investigations. So, and you also mentioned cameras. Can you tell us what you're seeing, what the status, when is it like? My understanding is zone three and four look like the bulk of whatever cameras that will be installed will likely be in three and four. Can you give us some update and uh, give any assurance as to how you think that's going to act as a deterrent, please? So once it, so let me, let me preface with this, with the information that I have currently, because that tends to change. Um, certainly there appears that there'll be a large increase in cameras across the whole footprint of zone three. Um, some, of that, some of that is replacing the cameras that are actually already there because they are, there's a kind of a, a shorter shelf life than most people think. Usually it runs about five to six years based off technology. So some of that influx will be just replacing what we have. But I know there's been a number of residents asking for certain, uh, you know, certain increases. And that's, that's with license plate readers as well as fixed cameras. So 
So I'm crossing my fingers that that will start to happen soon. Lastly, uh, there was a shooting over in the Oak Knoll area involving a juvenile. I did not hear that in the report. Is there a- So if we're talking about the warning to the that? home, there yes, is, that, that's, yes. still, that's still actively being investigated. Um, all I'll say is it was uh, started with an online dispute. Uh, very good. I think that's all the questions. I think, uh, Madam Chair, uh, um, Solicitor Burns was also going to chime in uh, because there's some questions of how much how much criminal activity at this location may merit additional uh, actions out of her office, if you don't mind. Um, she has dropped her hand. Let me call on Ken Akbar first. Uh, Ken, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Major Ricker. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your um, expedient uh, reply to the email that I sent out today regarding uh, mm -hmm. those prevailing issues between the apartment complex and our community. Mm -hmm. um, I will be following up with you, I guess, beyond this meeting to see what we can strategize, you know, what we can come up with to try to mitigate that situation. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Akbar. We do have one question in the chat, uh, which is it does 1660 Lakewood cameras, are they connected um, in the real time BIC system at the moment? 1660 Jonesboro or 1660 Lakewood? Uh, it says Lakewood. Uh, sorry, not Jones Lakewood. It's Jonesboro, Madam Chair. 1660 Jonesboro. Uh, forgive Jonesboro, me. Jonesboro, my bad. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not aware of them being hooked up. I will say that. From the incident this morning, there is very good video that we have. Thank you. I appreciate it. Are there any other questions for Major Ricker at this time? All right. Thank you so much, Major Ricker. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. You Thank you, Major Ricker. Thank you. I now call to the floor, Chief Cutter. I am, uh, my name is Jeff Petrier. I'm a battalion chief here in uh, Battalion One. Um, on over at uh, station number two. Uh, I'm new to the area and a uh, pleasure to meet all of you and uh, looking forward to working with you uh, throughout the times. And uh, just our, you know, thing that we've been talking about for quite a while now, you may have heard from us is about our close the door campaign. It's a national campaign that the um, U.S. Fire Administration has put out um, that talks about the, the one of the simplest ways you, you can to to help save your life and the life of your loved ones is by closing the bedroom doors when you sleep. Uh, it can make the difference between being 100 degrees in your room and over 1,000 degrees outside of your room uh, if a fire occurs. Um, there's uh, some definitely some information I can put in the chat if, uh, if people are interested in that. Um, and then uh, we have an upcoming hydrant season. Uh, so we'll be, you know, see us out. Uh, the fire trucks will be out, you know, flushing and greasing the fire hydrants, make sure they work. Uh, so just, you know, know that that's a normal maintenance item for us to do. Uh, nothing to be alarmed about. And uh, also the importance of you know, checking your smoke detectors and your CO alarms, uh, your carbon, carbon monoxide, um, just making sure you uh, are, are staying on top of changing those batteries out. I know that I'm, I'm, I've been a fireman for 26 years and I'm not the best about it myself. So uh, just, uh, just a, you know, a friendly reminder, make sure you do that so they can uh, help and keep you, keep you safe as well. And uh, uh, the Atlanta Fire Department is always hiring. Uh, so we have a, a need for uh, qualified candidates to come into the fire department. And if uh, that's something that anyone here or any of your loved ones or friends and family are interested in, we'd uh, be love to have them reach out to us to see if we can't uh, find place for them. Thank you. Uh, please place that information in the chat so we can share it throughout our general body through our social media as well. Do I have any questions for Chief Cutter? All right, as I see none, thank you so much. Oh, my apologies. Gloria, you have the floor. Chief Cutter, can you direct folks to both the uh, car seats as well as fire alarms where they may be able to um, pick them up? And I think they're gratuitous. Is that correct? They are. Uh, the uh, smoke alarms are absolutely free. Um, if we have them in stock at the fire stations, any fire station you go by, uh, then you know, they'll be happy to give you a smoke alarm or they'll even come in and install it for you if you need that service to come along with you. Uh, the car seats are free if you qualify and you have to be receiving some sort of government assistance and you have to be able to prove that you live in the community. 
Um, so there's a little, you know, little caveat that goes along with that. But yes, the, if you do qualify, then they're definitely free for you. And we'll install them and inspect them as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming this evening. You're welcome. I call to the floor Gerard Jackson with Parks and Rec. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful evening today. Um, right quick, I'm going to put our flyer in the chat. This flyer outlines various activities and opportunities that's going out throughout rec centers. So I, we created this so we could be able to get it out so you'll have something to look at and they give us more information about the things going around our parks. Um, so I'm actually putting that in right now so you should be able to see it in the chat. It is a PDF. Also, a couple of things pertaining to South Bend. South Bend will be having a track and baseball program this year. We just finished out baseball last weekend and we're looking to start our track and baseball programs next week. Um, we do service the ages of from 6U all the way up to 12U. Um, I wanna let everybody know that senior program has started at Perkinson Park. They actually have a, a monthly meeting every third Wednesday of the month. It's free of charge to attend. So we would love if, if any seniors are interested in participating. Um, please come by. Um, I want to let everybody know we're still working on getting the lights repaired up by the field. Currently, the lights are in disappear because we had somebody rip all the cables and wiring out of them. Right now, we're working with our contractors trying to find a way to ensure that once we replace the wiring, that it will not be ripped out again. So we are looking to try to get that sooner than later. But we're also looking to try to get cameras throughout the park so we can try to curve that element from in the park. Um, I want to make sure to let everybody know that snakes have been coming out. So if you do have activities in the park, please look out. At our particular park, we do have water moccasins, and I have heard of copperheads being at our particular park. So if you are utilizing our park, please be on the lookout for that. Um, last but not least, I know one of the work orders that I heard in the last meeting was about the, tr the swing set in the park. Uh, that issue has been resolved. So if there are any currently questions about parts of record, anything, please. Thank you. Um, I do see a hand raise, Sergeant Barn. Oh, I'm not sure if she's having uh, some difficulties with the system. Uh, are there any other uh, questions for Gerard Jackson and Parks and Rec? Um, hello. Yeah. All right. I posted this question in the chat. I'm not sure if it should stay there um, to be answered, but I was curious about the baseball program and uh, where those games are played. Uh, most of the time, the games are played either at Perguson Park or at our at the um, park location right next to Grant Park. So once we get a solidified location, I will let the information go so everybody can come out and support our teams. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I see one I in do, the chat. Oh, I do see one in the chat. Um, currently, we're trying to work on getting pickleball lanes at the Ferguson Tennis Court right now. As soon as I'm able to accomplish that, if there is a need for that, and I find there's the exact way of getting that done, I will start looking at trying to get that done at South Bend too. Thank you. All right, as I see no other hands raised, I appreciate you coming out to our meeting tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sergeant Barnes, you have the floor. Sergeant Burns. Uh, Madam Chair, I think it's the solicitor. <laughs> Yes. Good evening. No, it's no problem. I'm senior assistant solicitor Burns from the city of Atlanta solicitor's office. Um, my announcement is obviously I'm with the city of Atlanta solicitor's office. We prosecute um, many of the cases, all of code enforcement case, all code enforcement cases within the city of Atlanta, um, traffic cases and some criminal um, cases that you um, may see happening in your MPU. 
um, as attorney Gloria Hawkins did refer to, my office is also looking into 1660 uh, Jonesboro Road. I actually did have a opportunity to speak to my office and particularly all of the attorneys in our code enforcement unit this afternoon about that location. We do have several pending cases at that location. And to answer one of the questions that I saw in the chat, about their alcohol license. They do have a um, active business and alcohol license. It is valid as of our check this afternoon. Um, so um, to answer that question that I did see in the chat, we will be obviously um, talking a little further with Major Ricker about this location due to the numbers of calls of service in the last three months, months, which he indicated was 83. Um, again, we do have active and pending multiple actually code enforcement cases at this location that I actually looked into this afternoon. So if any of you have any further complaints or issues or any information that you know of about this location, please feel free to email me. My information is in the chat. Again, my office prosecutes code enforcement cases as well as nuisance property actions, which involves getting locations that have um, similarly situated issues happening at them as Little Bear shut down or forcing those owners to either rectify um, those issues by either putting in more security, more cameras, and doing what needs to be done to stop the crime wave happening at those locations. So please feel free again to email me if anybody has any questions. I will take those at this time. I see Gloria has your hand raised. You have the floor. Thanks, Solicitor Burns. We really appreciate you actually taking a look at this. The question that has arisen, this, this, this uh, homicide victim was found at 1.30 a.m. I think the question that arose today is, why are these businesses in need? Is there any possibility of limiting the business hours of these convenience stores? There's four of them within Lakewood. I mean, MPUI is 10 communities, but the epicenter of much of what um, has been disproportionate uh, serious felonies has seemingly arisen out of that locale, that Jonesboro Lakeway quarter. So the question arose, why, again, I don't think there currently is a prohibition against 24 seven of these convenience stores, but mm -hmm. what, what can we do? Um, so no, there is no current prohibition between, uh, as far as them operating for 24 hours. Um, it would be something that I would need to look a little bit more into with our code enforcement unit and also the law department, because it would obviously take a change in the city of Atlanta code in order to effectuate that happening. And that's something that my office would have to go through the law department to achieve. Thank you. And whatever support uh, we can provide, we will definitely lend, whether it's victim statements, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Thank you. And I appreciate MPUY for providing, you know, the list again of these nuisance properties. If you all could continue to. Absolutely. Thank you, Solicitor Burns. I appreciate you coming out. Are there any other questions for Solicitor Burns? As I see none, uh, we move to ATL 311. We have Paula Ransom on. You have the floor. All right, good evening. Um, again, my name is Paula. Um, I am a call agent with City of Atlanta ATL 311 Services. Um, also just wanted to remind everyone that uh, Mayor Dickens has declared 2023 as the year of the youth, which is a citywide initiative, which will work to um, equip Atlanta's young people with the resources that they need to thrive. Um, there is a website that's been developed, atlyouthengage.com, that has more information on that. And so um, ATL 311 is the non-emergency call center for City of Atlanta services. Um, I did place my information in the chat um, at the very beginning of the meeting, but if anyone needs the ATL 311 information again, I can definitely repost that. But 311 is a number that you will dial to report things like potholes, water main breaks, questions about your water bill, solid waste services, code violations, traffic light, sign maintenance, general ma general information, and much more. And we're open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. If you're within the city limits, you can dial 311. Otherwise, you need to use the full telephone number, which is 
546-0311. Um, any time of the day, you can email us. You can download the mobile app. Um, you can also report issues through the website or message us on social media. Um, the ATL 311 Supportive Services team has partnered with the PAD Initiative, which provides community resources for quality of life concerns that are related to unmet mental health needs like substance abuse, um, extreme poverty. And once a community member makes that referral, the PAD team will travel to that area and attempt to engage the referred individual and connect them to services. So, um, of course, thank you for allowing us to present tonight. Did anyone have any questions? Yeah, I do not see any hands at this time. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ransom. We appreciate the CAD system as that does help with our um, police officers that are still um, under forest right now. Uh, moving on to Officer Lawrence with the City of Atlanta Department of Public Works and Suite. You have the floor. Officer Lawrence, are you still on the call? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Officer Lawrence. I'm with the Department of Public Works. I'm with the SWEET team, Solid Waste Education and Enforcement. Um, my goal is where well, my job is to educate residents on how to properly dispose of their yard trimming, garbage, recycling. So if you have any of those issues with any neighbors or anything of that sort, you can submit a case through 311. We'll get someone out from our team uh, within 72 hours to investigate. Um, just please keep in mind that the investigation will happen within 72 hours. That doesn't necessarily mean that everything will be solved in 72 hours. Um, what I'm finding in the area is um, a lot of the residents are renters. So sometimes I have to actually go to contact find the owner to contact to get some type of compliance. Um, I've had a couple of issues on steel and Thurk Hill, but I'm kind of got, got under control. So just be a little bit more patient with me with that. Um, also, I just wanted to put out when you are submitting a case through 311, please use the nearest address to the violation as well as if you don't have a, a address, a physical address, use two cross streets. Um, be as detailed as you can with um, the violation or the description of it, whatever's going on. That would greatly help the officers out so we can make sure that we are servicing exactly what you're calling in and to also make sure it falls in our purview. Because um, sometimes when it just says garbage, it comes to us. But if it's on private property, that will belong to APD code. Um, so again, um, I did put my email in the chat, um, but I ask that if you have any um, violations that you wanna report or any investigations, please um, go through 311 first. If you have not gotten anything solved over time, please feel free to email me or contact me then. Um, we're just asking that you do it that way because if you send me an email and I'm out of the office, we can get someone else on that case to investigate as soon as possible instead of waiting until I come back. Um, last quick thing, because I know I'm running out of time. Officer, you're overtime officer, but okay. if you could wrap it up quickly. Okay, I just wanted to introduce my um, new manager, Ebony Jefferson. This is the new manager for the sweet team. She'll be real brief and just an introduction of herself. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Ebony Jefferson. I'm the new suite manager um, for the Department of Public Works. I will put my information in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, then you can send them to me as well. Um, just make sure that again, as Officer Lawrence stated, that you put all complaints should go through 311 serve so they can be properly routed to the correct department. Again, thank you for your time. And it's nice introducing myself to each of you. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Rebecca Robinson, you have your hand raised. Yes, good evening. Um, someone reached out to me about uh, garbage dumping at the Belt Street entrance on Pryor. And I wondered if you all were able to look into that. I think she was reaching out to Parks, but I was pretty sure 
you all would have to deal with the waste there. Yes, as long as it's on the right of way, our team be able will be able to address that. Um, just as we stated earlier, just go through 311, submit a case, but if we're riding in the area and we see it, um, we'll go ahead and put it in. But um, with us being all over the city, um, it just helps if someone will go ahead and put in the case. If we've already got to it, um, that's great. But if you submit the case through 311, we'll go ahead and get to it as soon as possible. Okay, if, she, if I hear back from her, I'll let her know. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Ken Akbar, you have the floor. Yes, uh, good evening. Um, I spoke with a code enforcement officer, uh, I guess, maybe a month and a half or so ago about the prevailing issues uh, uh, between the Jawland community and the villas of Lakewood, uh, not only with the, our fence being breached, uh, young people are coming through the backside of our community, but that apartment complex has been very irresponsible and negligent. Uh, in cleaning up their property. So it's all types of trash and waste along their fence line on their property side. And if not, I'm not mistaken, there is an open case already regarding that. Okay, in that case, it's probably with APD code being that it's on the property. Um, okay. So that, um, I think she's on the line, but yes. So the if it's on the property, um, as I stated, it will go through 311 Anything that's on the city right away, we will address. Um, or if it was individual, known individuals that were dumping on the property, we could address, but it would have to come from the property owners themselves. So um, in this case, I think that's something that APD uh, would have already had a case on. And I think she's on the line as well, so. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. And there is one um, comment in the chat about um, not having your pickup. Yard yes. picked up at Williams Drive. If you can follow up with that for us, uh, please, that would be great. Um, yes. Okay. So I'll uh, forward that over to the um, supervisor that's in the area. Um, just uh, also keep in mind, we're still on the bi weekly collection of it. Um, but I know they're stating that it has not been done in some time now. So I'll forward that to the supervisor in the area. Um, but if you also want to email me that information, I can forward them over their information as well. So if they need a call back, that'll work. Absolutely, thank you. Are there any other questions uh, for their suite team or public works? All right, as I see none, I thank you for joining our call. And I call to the floor Officer Cofield with Code Enforcement. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Officer Cofield with Code Enforcement. And Mr. Agbar, I am for behind the the sidewalk. So if you need to speak to me, I have put my phone number in there. I think I made a mistake with my email, but you're more than welcome to email me. You're more than welcome to report any violations that you need to to me or to 311 if you feel comfortable with them or me, either one. Um, I, would I would need an address in order to go back and like look at it. So if you can give me an address or put one in the chat, I would definitely, all right, I got you, uh, Miss Gloria. Um, but if you put put that address in there, just like Miss um, Gloria did, then I will gladly um, look that up for you. Um, only thing I have for you all this evening, I'm getting a lot of junk vehicles and you all are doing great with the junk vehicles. Got me going in the, in the driveways, put my orange symbols, but um, just let me know anything you all need from me. I will greatly look it up. Um, I'm here <laughs> sometimes after hours, if you call me, but I'm here, anything you all need, just let me know. And I do see uh, the, the 276, I'm gonna actually look at that one and when the demo will happen right now. Thanks. Any questions for me? Any questions from the body? All right, I see no hands raised. Thank you so much, Officer Cofield. Uh, all we'll right, then you all have a great yeah. evening. Thank you, have a great evening. Are there any other oh. city department representatives that have not been called upon? Please raise your hand. Oh, Jacob, I see your hand raised. Jacob Mills, you have the floor. Oh, I was just gonna ask. 
uh, put a question before Officer Cofield. Uh, we we have a uh, we've been getting a lot of phone calls about particular properties in Cheswood Park. Uh, I'll I'll communicate with you offline. I, I do see that you've put your information in the chat, so I greatly appreciate that. So, but we have everything from uh, stormwater collection uh, to silt fence erosion, uh, you know, stuff and um, building permits. So, I will. Definitely be in touch with you. Thank you, Officer Cofield. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Officer Cofield? All right, as I see no other hands raised, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you joining our meeting and giving us an update. Um, are there any other uh, city department representatives that have not been called on? All right, I thank you all, all of our city representatives and our police force for joining and all of the work that you do in our community and our city at large. Moving on to the next agenda item, we have our elected officials. I believe we have uh, Representative Tanya Miller from District 62, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, good evening everybody. So good to see your faces. Uh, I don't have a ton to say, uh, just to let you know that we are in legislative session. Uh, we just finished legislative day 20 last Thursday. We will, that's halfway through, we have 40 legislative days. Um, lots of interesting stuff happening at the Capitol. I will not give you a full legislative update. We should probably carve out time to do that because they can get a little wonky. But I wanted you to have my information. If you had any questions specifically about stuff happening at the Capitol, please feel free to, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you guys ever encounter any issues that involve state agencies and you need someone to uh, run anything down for you, that's what I'm here for. So whether it's Department of Transportation, Department of Motor Vehicles, um, Department of Public Health, really any of the state departments is kind of uh, where our jurisdiction lies. So please do not hesitate to reach out to me. And then lastly, I will just remind everybody everywhere I'm going, I'm reminding folks in the community to remind their neighbors that Medicaid unwinding is happening. Uh, effective April 1st, uh, we, the state of Georgia, will start the process of unwinding the Medicaid expansion that happened as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which means a lot of people are going to lose their health insurance. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a complicated thing, but I will tell you this. Please make sure your address, if you or someone you know is, is on Medicaid, please make sure your address, uh, your contact information is up to date. It's estimated that 45% of people will lose health care just because of some technicality. Uh, they did not have the right address, the mail got returned or something to that effect. And of course, most of the folks who are receiving this are our kids. So it's just really important that will understand that Medicaid unwinding is happening right now. It's going to be over, I think, a 14-month period. But the sooner you go into Gateway and update your information, the better. That's all I have. And again, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to, hi, Gloria, I'm happy to answer those tonight. Or you can text me or email me offline. Fantastic. Thank you. I do have two hands raised. Jacob Mills, you have the floor. Uh, Representative Miller, it was nice to meet you the other night. Uh, I appreciate you coming out. and. Thank you with us. Um, I, I just wanted to put this on your radar regarding a state route for a DOT project uh, on McDonough. Uh, it's McDonough Boulevard um, or McDonough Avenue. Uh, it runs in front of the federal penitentiary. We have the General Motors plant that is uh, located there uh, just where they finished the completion of the new bridge uh, that took about four years. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we, we have an opportunity to have an expansion along this roadway. And we have uh, a, a, a large track of land at the General Motors uh, facility that is now owned by Morris Kaplan. Uh, we have been speaking with their representative uh, regarding expansion through there with bike lanes, uh, two, uh, two traffic lanes going in both direction, a center turn lane, and then curb cutouts. Um, and then we also have the opportunity to extend this all the way down to our main thoroughfare, which would be Moreland Avenue. 
uh, Moreland Avenue starts on McDonough with that type of uh, street traffic flow and then uh, narrows down at the Thomasville Heights area. So right now these uh, locations are, they're, um, they're not abandoned properties, but they are not being utilized. They've been closed down. Um, and then the federal penitentiary would be a big part of that between uh, the districts of Benteen, Boulevard Heights, and Chosewood Park. It would be a massive connection point between our uh, South Atlanta side uh, to help bring people over to Metropolitan and Prior Road area. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there uh, as far as something that we could possibly continue a conversation with uh, regarding that expansion. Definitely. And if you would, if you want to um, text me, I think you, I think I gave you my uh, contact the last time we met, but it's in the chat. Text me a good time for us to talk offline so I can just get specifics about who you've been speaking to and what the progress is and what kind of the, just some little bit, a little bit more about the details of what the ask would be. And then we can liaison um, with the Department of Transportation. Perfect. Thank you, Representative Miller. I greatly You're appreciate welcome. it. Thank My you, pleasure. Um, I call to the floor Sherry Williams. Hi, thank you, Representative, for being here. Um, I just want to um, thank you for your work and also um, remind everybody or tell everybody tomorrow is Conservation Day at the Capitol. So, of course, any environmental um, issue, anything about the water, anything about green, solar, electrification, um, tomorrow is a great day um, for you to reach out to your um, state senator and state rep um, or come down in person. There's a lot going on. Yeah, and if you come down, find me. We're easy to find. Just come to the House chamber um, and, and stand by the rope. We start, we, we gavel in at 10 a.m. and we're usually done about an hour and a half, two hours after that. And did, did you guys restart the PAGE program? We did. So you want to tell them about it? Yeah, so the PAGE program is a really wonderful opportunity for uh, kids to come down to the Capitol as PAGES. Um, they basically get an excuse from school. They have their parents have to come with them and they actually assist legislators on the floor during session um, with all kinds of things. But what the pages generally love is that they get to see us in action. They get to go up and meet the Speaker of the House. They get to bang the gavel. They get lunch. And it's a it's just a good day for to expose kids to what happens in the people's house. So anybody with any pages, please reach out to me. Um, I would love to to get them involved. I know that um, they've been rocking and rolling with pages since they restarted the program. But if you have any kids, uh, most of the kids are either middle school or high school aged um, that I've seen. And I'm not sure if there's an age requirement, but reach out to me and we can make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Sure. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, I am going to call to the floor Amita. Nina with the office of council member Lewis, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, hey neighbors, lovely to be back in my own MPU. Um, just a quick update uh, for those who came to our uh, town hall. Thank you so much. Um, as you know, we're back um, at it. Budget season is about to start very soon. Um, a couple of updates. We're working with DOT's uh, commissioner to make sure that all the speed bumps that we had legislated uh, early in 2021 and, oh, 2022, sorry, time is crazy. 2022 are going to get installed um, and get installed before the new budget process starts, as well as um, the neighborhoods in NPU wide that are, that sit in District 12. Um, you're going to be getting a call, if not, if you haven't already, from Nicole Jones from our office. We have um, started a contract with um, uh, Center for Employment Opportunities, also known as CEO. They elect formerly incarcerated, they hire uh, formerly incarcerated folks to come and uh, clean up the district. And we're going neighborhood by neighborhood. So this week they're in High Point Estates and Joyland. Um, other than that, we are going to be, you know, 
the district to make sure that any roads that you guys need cleaned up are cleaned up. Um, if you have any street light requests um, from Georgia Power, if so, a street light is out, it's too dim, um, please email me. My contact is in the chat and we'll send that directly over to Georgia Power. Um, we had our first very successful job fair a couple weeks ago with 500 applicants and of those 500, 236 were hired, including 33 new sheriffs. And we're going to continue to do this all throughout the year. So please be on the lookout. And I will also drop the link to get our newsletter in the chat. Um, and thank you so much for sending me your list. I know I added in PUI and y'all's um, master list as well. So if you have any questions, I'm always open. Um, please feel free to call me. And Mr. Akbar, I got your email about the apartments today. Uh, we did send it over and we're working on it. And I'll give you a call tomorrow about those apartments as well. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, there is a question on the chat of if there is any update from GDOT on putting traffic lights on University Avenue northbound exit, um, if there is any follow-up on that. Yes, so um, they, as y'all know, GDOT takes forever to work with the city to get these uh, lights up, but it has finished um, their prerequisites as well. Um, and we are working through that process. As as you all know, we just got a new commissioner. So he's kind of coming up to speed on everything that happened when Commissioner um, Emeritus, as she likes to call herself, uh, was there and Josh Rowan was there. So we're getting up to speed and I should have a more concrete answer um, in the upcoming days. Thank you. Are there any other questions for um, Council Member Lewis's office or for me none? I see a hand raised. Helen, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Okay. On Meter Avenue has become a speed a speed trap. I mean, it's just like a, a speedway. They are supposed to put bumpers in there, and mm -hmm. if they don't, somebody's going to be killed. Meter Avenue is a speed is a speed highway. So I just wanted to address that. Yes. Um. So I believe that we did legislate that last year. I'll double check and any ones that we have already legislated or even right now are legislating, we're waiting on the weather to consistently be warm. Um, so we can put up traf uh, speed bumps and other things of those sorts because they cannot put it up when the traffic, uh, the weather is cold. But I will check on meter and I will um, send your chair an update so she can send it out as well. Or if you wanna drop your chat, um, drop your information in the chat. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> were there any other questions for Mina with Council Member Lewis? Uh, Gloria, I see your hand raised. Yeah, thanks. Uh I, I'm like, hey, Mina, I think you might mention as the question just arose in the chat that uh, a very small uh, part of uh, Lake of uh, MPUY is actually in uh, District uh, 12. And I think Meter is District 1, although I believe the council persons, council members are collaborating. But we Meter, are. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Mina. Yes, that was one of those weird roads that's like kind of kind of on the border, kind of not. So um, I believe that was one of the pieces of legislation we had put together last year. So uh, let me check on that and talk to Councilmember Winston's office and I'll get back to you. And thank you for a great town hall on Saturday. Thank you for attending. All right, thank you. Are there any other city representatives that wish to present at this time? <laughs> All right, as I see none, I appreciate all the work that you do with our city council members and coming out and speaking with our community. I mean, we're a little um, over our time schedule uh, for where we like to be at this point in the meeting. So as we go through our committee reports, please keep your committee reports to two minutes or less. Uh, general body, please hold your comments and questions until we are completed with all committee reports. You may also place Nicole. them- Nicole. <laughs> Nicole. Yes, Cheryl, I hear you. Okay, so I just wanted to say I am here, and yes, we are collaborating, and Meter Avenue is in our district, so um, ditto to what she was saying, and we are working really hard to see that come through, but like she said, there are a lot of, um, well, our commissioners are all new, we're getting them up to speed, and um, we should see that, because Meter Avenue has needed speed on for a long time. 
So I want you to know that that is something that is important to Council Member Winslow. I mean, uh, Council Member Winston, how do I say Winslow, um, as well. But if there's anything else, yes, I would like, to, if you don't mind, let me just say thank you to the MPUY residents that showed up to the meet and greet for Council Member Winston um, last Thursday. It was productive, I believe. And um, we're looking forward to assisting in any, in any way. I don't wanna be repetitious in a lot of the comments that have been made before. I know that you guys are, um, I've been on this meeting for a minute, so I don't wanna just uh, be repetitious, but if there are any questions that you all have for our district, I am willing to entertain them at this time. Are there any questions for Cheryl Bennett and council member uh, Jason Winston? Winston. All right, I see no hands raised for you. Thank you for coming. Yep. Anytime. Uh, so we will move on to our committee reports. As I said, please keep them short. Um, and also, uh, please keep the, your comments until after. I uh, have the zoning, land use, and code enforcement, which is Jacob Mills and co chair Robert Morris, Bob Morris. You have the floor. Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, Bob is on vacation very well needed vacation so I will take the report tonight uh, we do have uh, a lot going in uh, going on in MPUY right now so there's 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 a few projects that have stalled in Lakewood uh, Lakewood Heights uh, there are projects that are moving forward in Lakewood Heights Chosewood Park is always very busy uh, just for the sake of time this evening uh, for because I know that we're going over a little bit um, a little bit further than we wanted to be along uh, if anybody has any questions regarding zoning if anybody has any comments or anything please feel free to reach out to either me or Bob I will put my information in the chat um, this is pertaining to um, boundary lot lines uh, elevations um sap's variances all kinds of things so if anybody has any questions uh please feel free to ask them now regarding any of the specific properties that might have stuff going on in, in your neighborhood otherwise i will put my information in the chat here thank you jacob i appreciate you your presentation um i'd call to the floor gloria um, Hawkins, if you have um, any additions to public safety. I just want to reiterate what we heard and saw tonight. Again, Major Ricker, uh, 1660 has really become the epicenter of everything that was located at the Severn. Uh, tomorrow, uh, um, Nicole and I will be going to the LRB, the License Review Board. We believe with the uh, evidence that we have, there's a good chance that we will be able to defeat that license. Uh, so far, the last four that have gone before the LRB have been defeated in Lakewood, primarily based on inability of the proprietors to control the premises. So again, we're working very hard, probably overnight, to make sure we shore up the arguments and that the evidence is in place. So I just want to reiterate that 1660, as you heard from Solicitor Burns, it's high on their radar. 87 of those stops in the last 30 days were, uh, again, I think he said 24 were calls, but the remaining were proactive, proactive stops on behalf of the officers themselves. So I think the implication there was that the officers themselves are stopping and patrolling. Only 24 of those calls were, of those stops were called. So let's see, um, you know, I mean, I, I had a flurry of text messages today. Nobody feels good when dead bodies are found anywhere. And again, we thought we talked about looking at the 24 uh, seven prohibition of these out, these uh, these out retail outlets being open. So uh, any, any, any further comments? We had Solicitor Burns uh, information. She's looking for victim impact statements, anything that will make this move and be able to perhaps even rescind the license of that of that location. Thank you, Gloria. Um, I call up next is our parks, Beltline and environmental uh, chairperson, Rebecca Robinson. 
Good evening. Um, I'm just going to put it in the chat. We're going to be hosting another volunteer event this Sunday, um, the 26th from 1.30 to 4 p.m. Um, hopefully the weather will be nice. I haven't checked it yet, but I put my email in the chat. Um, come out and join us. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Next up is education, Monique Nunley. Is Monique can you hear me? Yes, I can. You have the floor. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Monique and um, really excited. This month we had our meeting on the second Monday of, of February. Um, I will place the minutes in a folder and share them with Nicole so that you all can get them. Um, we talked about the Lakewood Elementary School uh, still working to learn more from Lakewood Heights and they had a meeting. So we're still uh, waiting to hear more about um, some of the input about what happens to Lakewood Elementary School. Currently, APS has not announced the sale of the property. And so right now, it's just in a holding pattern. So we still are in limbo from that point of view. Um, secondly, we have issued a formal complaint with Atlanta Public Schools in regards to parent notifications and how parents receive notifications about if we don't have teachers in our schools. You might be wondering, why does the community care? The community kind of needs to know if kids don't have teachers. Uh, currently, the ESSA federal program, Every Student Succeeds Act, requires that if a child hasn't had a teacher in field for four weeks, they should receive a parent notification to instruct the parent that their child doesn't have a in-field teacher after four consecutive weeks. And so we're currently working to talk with Atlanta Public Schools and Superintendent Herring about how we would like to see some level of parent notifications when we don't have teachers in place. This gives our community information so that we understand how our schools are doing. Um, one of the ways we're trying to do that is with school tours. So we've been advocating for a little over 18 months, probably longer for school tours. Purpose-built schools, which are our MPU um, designated schools, Price, Slater, and Carver Steam, they now have a school tour. Um, the first that has been issued currently is Slater Elementary School. They're looking for pre-K through... Monique, Monique, you're at time. Oh, sorry. Anywho, check out the link for the Slater tour, pre-K through five. That is going to be really exciting. And then I'll share the minutes from the rest of our um, meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Next, I have Lakewood Oversight. Uh, Yolanda, Yolanda Cameron, you have the floor or anybody else from Lakewood Oversight? Um, I do not believe Yolanda is on the call. So we will move on to Lakewood Finance. Do I have anybody on for Lakewood Finance at the time? Madam Chair, I'm not sure if she's there. Adrian Proler is a member of the finance. Uh... Uh, that would be Kanika, Jimmy, or Nikki. If I have none, then we will move on. <clears throat> uh, communications, Kelly Jean. Nothing to report. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have our APAB uh, with Gloria Hawkins with Kim. Um, nothing to report. Thank you. Um, I know that we also have our ad hoc committee with Alira Lofton, which she will be doing a presentation later in our meeting tonight. All right, moving on. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. I should have I should have reiterated that we have selected our uh, recipient of the 23 Why It Matters Award that comes through comes through APAB, and I guess you want me want to reiterate who that recipient is. Um, if you can please do so. Troy, Troy won the. He's the. He's our. He is our selectee from NPUY to receive the annual. Why? Uh, I'm sorry, I said why it matters. Neighborhood matters award uh, through the through APAP, the Atlanta Planning and Advisory Board. We did select Troy, didn't we? We did vote on that, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So moving on, is there any other questions from the general body for any of our committees?
All right, as I see none, we will move on to voting matters. <clears throat> voting matters to this evening, we have a, ZR, a ZRB application. Uh, this is for a recommendation to uh, rezone the property from an R4A to a PDH. Uh, do I have an applicant on to present for two? You do. Milton Avenue. Hi, Nicole. It's Beth Cooper. Floor, Beth. Hi. Uh, do you want me to share my screen? Yep, give me one moment and I can share it. Stop this for you. All right. You should be able to share your screen at this time. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, is it big enough? Can y'all see it? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Beth Cooper with Big Door Properties. Um, I was in front of the Chosewood Neighborhood Park Association meeting, um, I believe it was on January 10th, um, for uh, the presentation that I'm going to run through tonight for you. Um, we did get a, a vote in Chosewood to support the project. Um, and so uh, I just kind of want to run through the details. I am looking for your support tonight uh, to rezone 216 Milton Avenue. Just to give you some context as to where it's located, it is just south of the Lakewood and Milton Avenue split. Um, the property adjacent is the uh, old school. Um, on the corner of McDonald and Milton. And then there's a property that is just south adjacent, which is 220 and 224 in orange, um, which is already zoned a PDH, which uh, was done with the support of your community um, back in 2019. So we are looking to assemble 216, which is uh, the one with the little red marking right here, um, it is currently a single family rental. Um, in fact, the owner of that property, I believe, is on tonight's call as well. Um, and we are looking to build 12 townhomes for sale. Um, these would be three, approximately three bedroom, three and a half bath, approximately 1,800 square feet. Um, and within the guidelines of land use with no changes requested, no changes in FAR, um, and within the guidelines of the Beltline overlay. So just to kind of run through what those details are, um, again, we're looking to uh, rezone the 216 parcel from R4A to PDH and assemble it in one unified site plan um, with 220 and 224 Milton. Uh, let me just jump to the site plan so you can see. Um, these are 12 uh, townhomes, fee simple townhomes. Um, we will, um, obviously we're working with grading and topography. And so there are some retaining walls that we're gonna build. Um, and in order to create more of a, a softer design aesthetic on the, on the retaining walls, instead of just having big tall walls, we wanna actually put planters and we've requested a few changes. Um, so in order to do that and add more trees along Milton Avenue. Um, and so this is a, a hand drawing of what that might look like. Um, you'll see that if you can see my cursor that these are the planters that we wanna build on the front. Um, and then there's an elevated sidewalk here for connectivity. Excuse um, me, Beth, you're at time. Okay. If y'all have any questions, this is the rear. Thank you. Uh, before we go to any raised hands for discussion, I would like to call on a member from Chosewood Park to um, uh, explain the community's consensus on the vote last month. Jacob Mills. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Beth. Uh, she came before Cheswood Park last month. Actually, it was the month before she had missed, uh, I guess the deadline for January. I think it was December that you came. Uh, the vote was to support this. Um, this particular developer is following the comprehensive development plan that was put forth by Chosewood Park, uh, submitted to the city council and approved. Uh, they have 
uh, streetscapes. They have a plan for stormwater collection. Um, and most importantly, uh, if what I've heard from the constituent base is ownership, which is extremely important. Um, these particular properties have been sitting vacant for quite some time. <clears throat> As she had mentioned uh, previously that the uh, two of the properties had been rezoned back in 2019. This is a consolidation of the lots. So uh, as far as Chosewood Park is concerned, the vote was to support this uh, development uh, for those particular reasons. So I, if there's questions for the neighborhood, I'll field those. If there's questions for the developer, uh, Beth, you have the floor for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jacob Mills. I'll call to the floor, Gloria Hawkins. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Uh, is this adjacent or directly adjacent to that school? Is like an old- uh, It is, a, yes, yes, ma'am. It is adjacent to the school. Uh, what, if any concerns, did any uh, descending or dissension, was there any concerns for any members that were in dissension of the agreement? The only well, sorry, go ahead, Jacob. Yeah, I was going to say the only dissension from the uh, the neighborhood and pushback from the neighborhood was uh, these particular lots are zoned uh, single family, uh, which the neighborhood has a, a very limited amount of single family lots. Uh, but this is directly next door to a property that has been sitting vacant for quite some time. Uh, that has, it's an old school, an old service center, I guess, for APS. Uh, it has not been improved. Uh, yep. And, and Beth, I would just like to say, I, 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 you need a little help on your maps. Um, <laughs> those, they play a big part of this. Um, the, but that green lot that she's showing there is uh, that particular location. Uh, Crazy Legs Productions owns this particular lot. They haven't done anything with it. Uh, Beth is uh, offering something uh, that the neighborhood is <clears throat> very animate to see, which is ownership. Uh, right now, what we're getting at the top of the map that you see here is a large amount of rental properties um, and a space that could be Over utilized here. better. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and so, uh, regarding this particular property, the, the ownership was one of the, the key factors and, uh, you know, being able to follow through with the comprehensive development plan. We don't see a lot of developers coming into the neighborhood currently, and we have a lot of them uh, that are following our comprehensive development plan. So that was one of the driving factors for why this wasn't, it wasn't a unanimous vote, but the, the only can, you know, pushback was the fact that this was a single family resident. And you can see it's surrounded by heavy industrial across the street, uh, which would more than likely in the future be down zoned and turned into something hopefully better, be, you know, adjacent to the railroad tracks there. Um, Excuse me, Jacob, you're out of time. Yep, sorry, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll call it for Russell Hopkins. <laughs> I just want to move to vote to the support. Uh, second. second. Russell has motion to vote to approve. And who was the second? I'm not sure. I said second. Like it. Oh, it sounded like, was it Troy? Yeah, it was me. Troy, Troy not only second. Um, so we will go ahead and um, use the poll system. If you are on the, app, um, on the system with more than one member, um, that is on the call, please place their name and their vote in the chat. Um, I'm going to place this up so that we don't confuse any of our votes moving forward. So this is a ZRB motion to approve. Um, I do see multiple hands raised. Uh, Russell? Madam Chair, they may think, they, they may may think they're voting. I, I just never lowered my hand, I'm sorry. Okay. Pardon. Gloria, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I thought we were in the voting. <laughs> Sorry. So use the poll system to vote. Uh, if you have more than one person on your call, please place their full name and their vote in the chat. We will. Madam, leave Madam Chair, is it a good time to remind of the 
eligibility voting requirements. Absolutely, requirement. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so our voting requirements, MPU recognizes residential constituents, any person 18 years of age or older who are primary place of residence is within MPUI's designated area. If you are a business constituent or representative, which you are allowed to have one, um, or if you also own property in the neighborhood, um, business constituents may design, designate one, as I stated previously. Each el eligible constituent is entitled to one vote upon attendance of his or her third meeting within a 12-month period. This may be your third me meeting. We'll leave the chat open for 15 more seconds. Madam Chair, I think all of the co-hosts have voted yes. There are three of us at least that cannot vote in the poll. Perfect, thank hey, you. Hey, Nicole, it, it's Beth. In the poll, it doesn't actually state what the motion is. The so motion. I'm a... Yes, the motion on the floor is to approve. Okay, so, okay. Thank you. And I have that reflected in the minutes as well, Beth. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right. Oh, Nicole. Uh, twice by mistake, deleted one of my, delete one of mine. Sorry about that. Did you vote twice in the uh, poll? You believe is what you're saying? I did because I, um, I have uh, my cell phone and the computer going, and I voted twice. So delete one of them. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. So and after I'm not sure if you understood what I, if you heard what I said that there are three of us who are co-hosts who are voting in the affirmative, but yes. we're unable to access the poll as a result of it. Yes, I see that. So as the poll is closed, okay. I have a poll result of uh, 33 yes, two no, and three abstain because of um, Omar Ali voting twice. That would be 32 yes, two no, Three abstain, and what do we have in the chat? One, two, three, four yeses. So we have 36, two, three. That would uh, be a motion pass as an approval. Heather, do we have the same there? I do. I just wanted to clarify, you're going to drop the voting records for Kelly Jean to verify before we say that it's a legitimate vote? Yes, absolutely. So we will verify uh, before we submit any minutes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, are you able to clear the roster? There's one raised hand still. Uh, that would be Heather's hand raised. Okay, so moving to the next agenda item. Give me one moment to swap over here. We have new business, we have no old business. So we will be moving on to new business, which is our community impact grant. We will be submitting an application for a 2023 community impact grant. I hand over the floor to Alira Lofton, who is our chairperson for ad hoc, ad hoc for special projects. All right, give me one moment to share my screen. All right, I am having some technical difficulties. Uh, uh, do you have the presentation? Absolutely. Give me one moment. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. No problem. All right, perfect, thank you. So last month we discussed some ideas for the community impact grant, and I am going to review those ideas now. And then after that, we'll be able to vote on which idea we would like to move forward with for the grant. Are you still able to see the shared screen? No, all I see is um, a white like mm -hmm. um, background, it seems. Okay. We have to stay in this mode, I'm not able to do slideshow. Oh, so okay. As you call, so. All right, uh, we can go ahead and move forward. 
to the next slide. Thank you. All right, so the Community Impact Grant Program is funded by the Department of City Planning to assist NPUs in their efforts to improve their neighborhoods and the city as a whole. Next slide, please. Thank you. And uh, this year, we will be um, awarded $6,500 uh, towards the idea that we choose. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So um, the MPUs are awarded the grant for the purposes of neighborhood enhancement, neighborhood leadership and capacity building, neighborhood awareness and community engagement, and then also the development um, assistance for neighborhoods. Next slide, please. Uh -huh. And uh, we would like to focus on neighborhood awareness and community engagement. So follows the four ideas that we have uh, discussed. Next slide, please. Thank you. And the following one. So the first idea that we discussed was teacher appreciation. And um, we noted that teachers are not appreciated enough by our communities. And um, the solution or suggestion for the grant, if we decided on this one, was to celebrate our unsung heroes to have a catered lunch, maybe pay homage via a t-shirt or a trinket or something like that, and possibly a small business discount. But the grant, unfortunately, would not be able to cover that. Next slide, please. Here's the budget that we are proposing for uh, the teacher appreciation idea. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the next idea was for a Southeast uh, MPU Unity Day. So the um, reason why it was brought up is because there's not really a way for leaders to meet each other and collaborate. And so that leaders would be able to bring together community members. And then the solution would possibly be an annual event for community leaders, city leaders, and school leaders in the Southeast Quadrant to get together and have a unity day and just be able to bring together all members of the community, including our youth. Next slide, please. Thank you. And this would be the proposed budget for the unity day that includes uh, the event space rental permits, any flyers, food, snacks, DJs, a bouncy house, and other uh, additional costs there. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the next idea was a traffic light box murals of unity to be able to beautify our community and show a sense of unity. And um, the solution would be involving the youth and possibly commissioning uh, different artists to design and um, develop the murals. And then the next slide, please has some examples of what they look like. The one on the left is one that is in uh, Decatur, and then the one on the right is in the Old Fourth Ward. Next slide, thank you. Uh, we have provided here a possible budget. Excuse me, Alara, you're at time. Ooh, okay, <laughs> well, let's keep going then. That's just the budget, we have one more. Oh, go ahead, what'd you say? Uh, just that we're okay on this stuff to keep moving forward a little over. Uh, Okay, well, this will be uh, the last one. This is just an alternative option to include the traffic light box murals and a unity day, and then we would have to adjust the budget accordingly. And it would also be a little over uh, 6,500, but we would uh, try to get funding from our um, city council members. And then next slide, please, is the budget, including those suggestions for uh, those multiple ideas together. And then the last slide is the voting. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you have any questions for um, Alira and our special um, special ad hoc for, sorry, our ad hoc for special projects mm -hmm, for the CIG that we have? All right. As I see no hands raised, we'll go ahead and move to a vote. Um, again, we are going to be um, voting through a poll system. Uh, so if you do have additional votes, let me go ahead and put in the top chat that what our vote is moving towards. So that way we don't confuse any votes as we tally these. Um, you have your options of teacher appreciation, Southeast MPU Unity Day, Lightbox Mural of Unity, and or the combined option. And that's the combined option of the last two, is that correct? Correct, yes, it is on a smaller scale. 
but it does allow for us to do both. We would be asking our council members or others to uh, donate in order to hit our full budget. Um, and if we are unable to hit the full budget, we will be um, limiting that to the budget that we have. Mm. All right, give it a few more seconds for our vote here. Right, and I am closing the poll. Um, at this time, I have five for teacher appreciation, three for unity, uh, two for light box murals, and 19 for combined within the poll. Uh, let's see what we have in the chat. All right, so combined has it. So we will move forward with our combined uh, application for Mural of Unity and Unity Day, both on a smaller scale. Okay, thank you. And what was the total number for the combined option? 19. 19. 23. I have um, 23 with the chat. 23 with yes, the that's what I was, yes, thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. All right, thank you everybody. We really appreciate um, everybody's input on this project um, as we move forward on these. Uh, these CIG grants are really for the community to be able to get funding from our city. And this is a great way for us to have input on those. Um, as we move to our next subject, we have announcements. Do we have any announcements from um, any general, any members of our body? You may raise your hand at this time if you need to make an announcement. I see one, Gloria Hawkins, you have a four. Yeah, thank you. Uh, last Saturday, the 18th of February, St. Vincent de Paul, three, three to four hour block of uh, community session. I don't know if others, I'm, I'm unable to submit into the uh, chat some of the ideas that were posted. A third session will take place on Saturday, March 18th, I believe it is as well. Did I get that correct, Heather? Is it Saturday, March 18th? Saturday, March 18th from 12 to 2 at the old SunTrust building in Lakewood Heights. That's right. It's uh it's at its the site. And again, I think we can substitute we can put maybe post on um next on MPUY some of the renderings and some of what uh, was presented as options. At least there were three. Yeah, I'm happy to speak on it since you were only there for the last 10 minutes or so, Gloria. Um, so they are in the process of submitting proposals and trying to understand Garner community input on what to do with the space. They've owned it for the past five or six years, I believe. Um, and so it's looking at mixed use developments, um, and they currently have a mix of commercial, residential, and uh, retail that's sort of being proposed to the community. So this will be the third session next month. Encourage everybody to come. They've been serving lunch and been really receptive to community feedback. And if I could just add one other layer, I think Travis, uh, who travels in the corridor of a similar proposal of what they've been doing, that's kind of, I guess, speaks speaks to some some amount of credibility, if I can use that word, up on Shamley Tucker Road. It is, um, I don't believe it's a new build. I thought it was a new build, but this is a proposed new build and not a re uh, renovation of what is currently there, which we find very interesting. All right, thank you. Um, I see Alara Laughlin, you have your hand raised, you have the floor. Uh, hold on. Okay, yes, there we go. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that I am going to put my email in um, the chat box if anyone would like to help with the uh, community impact grants and the combined op uh, option that we just voted before. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty on my end, um, but as we move to our next, I know our presentation that we have is from Omar Ali with 
um, Ali at Lakewood. Uh, you have the floor for your presentation. Please limit to uh, three minutes. Okay, I am going to share my screen. It's going to be Omar Ali computer. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Omar Ali. Uh, I am the owner of Ali at Lakewood, which is located at 1800 Jonesboro Road. Um, since coming to the neighborhood, we have done extensive um, change in the neighborhood. Uh, located at the Ali building itself, we've brought um, over 13 businesses in the building. Uh, we brought over 60 jobs in the building. Um, from the coffee shop, Black Coffee, the restaurant, Love at First Bite, the top floor is doctor's office and even the spot in the building, Ewe Fresh. What we are seeking to do is uh, obtain a letter of support uh, to be the developer on the old abandoned Lakewood school. Um, I think it's important to note that this is already passed on the Lakewood level, 17 to seven. I wanna walk everyone through a very quick timeline to show that we have been engaged with the community for quite some time. Uh, since coming to the neighborhood in 2018, the neighborhood asked us to immediately communicate with um, APS. Uh, we started communicating with APS and having over three to four different uh, community meetings to figure out exactly what the community wanted to put into the old abandoned Lakewood uh, building. Uh, that building has been a, a very sore spot for the community from murders, rape, you name it, just taking place into the building. Um, so from inception from 2018 all the way up into 2022, we have been heavily, heavily involved with the community. I wanna bring up a map so that everyone can understand. Uh, this will show the school right here that's in purple. Every purple building uh, located here is abandoned. Uh, the pink building right here is the current building that we own, which is the Ali at Lakewood. So what we are trying to do is to remove the blight in this particular area and removing this particular blight would go a long way with the community. So this is the overhead view. Uh, of the parking lot. Uh, to give you a better representation, we currently already own everything in blue. Uh, the red is what we are proposing to either purchase or lease from the uh, APS uh, administration. And so our plan for this particular building, we're gonna turn it into retail loss with a combination of early childhood development. So meeting with the formed us on the lower level, they wanted some type of retail restaurant, space, art centers, grocery store, things along that particular matter. And so uh, we 100% agree with that. And then we came up with another concept to have on the top level lofts, uh, ranging from 800 square feet up to 1500 square foot lofts. And then the community also indicated that they wanted to have an early childhood component to it. So this particular building right here in the back is ideal because it's a separated gym. We can easily repurpose that particular building and turn it into an early childhood center to isolate it from the rest of the uh, property. Excuse so, me, Omar, you're at time. Okay. So again, we are seeking a letter of support uh, to be the developer on this particular property. Thank you. So before we call our um, community first to um, comment, and then we'll open the floor to discussions. I would like to um, make a comment that for clarity, the presenter has made a formal request uh, to present through DCP, which is the Department of City Planning, which was then approved to uh, be on the agenda by the MPU Executive Board. Um, and this presentation was also approved from the community at the time um, to be on their presentations. Um, while Mr. Ali may be seeking a letter of support, this is in no means the intent for MPU why to convey a recommendation to support any particular outcome for the properties included as disposal of surplus as APS has not disclosed their process or procedure for surplus properties. This process is still being discussed by the Education Board, of, or sorry, by the Atlanta Board of Education at the March retreat, and so we will not have information on that until then. Uh, first, I would like to call Lakewood Heights um, as they had their meeting uh, previously with us. Uh, Zachary Murray, would you like the floor for that? Sure. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody, and thanks, Mr. Ali, for presenting. Uh, there was a vote taken. Uh, we had a, a little bit of lack of clarity 
on our side about where this falls uh, with APS. So thanks, uh, Nicole, for clarifying that this evening. Um, as Mr. Ali stated, the vote was 17-7. Um, um, however, uh, I just noticed uh, there were new elements of the presentation, the renderings uh, that we requested were not presented to the community. Um, so this is new to us. And I uh, personally would like to make a motion um, to defer on this, given the new elements of the presentation the community didn't see as far as the renderings and also uh, waiting APS's uh, uh, next steps in terms of both their engagement process and an eventual RFP or anything that takes place in that regard. Is there a second at this time or will we? Second, uh, Heather. Okay, I will open the floor for discussion before we move, move to vote on a deferral. Uh, first I have up is Russell Hobson. I was unmuting, pardon me. Um, it is still the policy to support the finding of the neighborhood, correct? And one person in the neighborhood cannot unilaterally overrule the neighborhood vote? Correct, that is true. Okay, that, well, my hand was up to support the neighborhood finding. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, if, if, the, if we can work through this motion, that would be my motion. Okay, Jacob Mills, you have the floor. Yeah, I would just like to say, so the, the the neighborhood, uh, the vote was to support this. Uh, and I do know that uh, developer timelines are always, uh, time is of the essence, so to speak. Uh, the developer is asking for a letter of support. Uh, the neighborhood supported it. Uh, I would say that uh, Zachary Murray's uh, comment regarding the elevations is always something that's a little bit uh, premature in this particular point from the developer standpoint. Uh, I, I would like to make a motion to support um, for, for a letter of support. I'd like to make a motion of letter of support for this. Uh, I don't think I don't think we can do that until we rule on the first motion. That's fine. Um, uh, yeah, let's let's go through some discussion first and then I'll, I'm going to call on our parliamentarian to clarify because um, I'm not sure that we can make a motion during a uh, community finding, but, um, but Jacob, go ahead and finish and we'll move forward with some of our. Yeah, I, I, I think my biggest points were um, it is a blighted spot in the community. Saltel is going to be a major thoroughfare as a connection between Lakewood Heights. Uh, as we all know, with the General Motors plant uh, and uh, Morris Kaplan uh, there with their massive development that they're planning. Uh, we're still waiting to see uh, elevations from that particular development, which I think is going to make a, a major game changer for the MPUY as a whole, not just uh, Tozewood Park, uh, Lakewood Heights, Historic South Atlanta, but all of us. Um, and I think it will even uh, affect people's town, Grant Park, all those. So uh, a particular building as as this that's been blighted for a long time, the, the developer is simply asking for a letter of support to continue the portion of uh, their, wherever they're at in the process, whether it's funding, whether it's APS or whatnot. Uh, I would just say, uh, I wouldn't hold that up based on the fact of what those elevations and what those renderings are that you saw tonight. That's that's it for me. Thank you. Um, I would before we have any more raised hands that I'll call on for discussion. Um, Rebecca Robinson, our parliamentarian uh, chairperson. Uh, what is the procedure for a, a motion being placed during a neighborhood recommendation as it was not for an open discussion? It was and a recommendation, a motion contrary to the neighborhood's recommendation during is well, I think we still have to vote on the motion that someone moved to the floor and then we can, someone, if it fails, we just, someone else does a new motion, right? Madam Chair, I agree with Rebecca that essentially once that motion is on the floor and it's second, it moves towards discussion and a vote, unless, unless the, in the movement rescinds the motion. Okay. Perfect, so we'll continue with discussion and then we will uh, move forward with the motion to defer that is on the floor. Uh, so as we continue with our discussion, we have Yusuf Ali. Uh, yes, uh, 
Uh, good after, good evening. Uh, I just concur with uh, Troy um, that that the in um, the MPU did uh, vote in favor of a letter, and I think it would be contrary to um, go against what the MPU has already voted to do. Thank you, Kelly Petty. You have the floor. Um, yes, thanks, Nicole. Again, um, I agree with others that I vote in favor of moving forward um, with giving Omar the letter um, of support from the community. Many of us in the community understand that this is not the last step and that APS at the end of the day has the discretion. If anything, um, this serves as a reference letter in some, some sorts for Omar. And at minimum, it just lets APS know a resounding vote from the community, from most in the community that we're looking for that property to be commercially developed and not to be turned back into a school. Um, and it also uh, shows that, you know, Omar um, has trust of the, of the community. The renderings are just another added thing that he did to appease those who had questions. And we're looking forward to what he could do if he is given the opportunity to take on the project and it'll match what St. Vincent de Paul is doing on the other side of Jonesboro Road so we can start start to finally get some commercial development in Lakewood. So thank you. Thank you. I have Devon Dixon, you have the floor. Uh, this is sort of a point of information. Am I allowed to address um, the person that put the motion on the floor? I've got one question. If the rendering, if the person that proposed the motion thinks that the rendering is going to reverse the vote, were, were the renders particularly uh, unimpressive or, or what, what would additional renderings, how would that make the vote go the opposite direction? Exactly. Uh, chairs, yes. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this is a historic property. It's a contributing property to Lake was listing on the National Register. And so there is some due diligence that has to take place on behalf of the community, in my opinion, given that fact. The other point is that beyond some uh, very vague details, we have nothing in concrete about uh, the, the housing units, about the commercial units, about levels of affordability, et cetera, et cetera, because that information hasn't been put out yet by APS. And so in my opinion, because there are no concrete details about what the developers plan to offer, I think it does require further community conversation. Um, there's interest in commercial development, there's interest in housing units, but we have nothing in detail in the presentation. The rendering is new this evening, um, but those other details about what exactly the use of the, is gonna take place in terms of the use of the property have, haven't been presented to the community or to the MPU. Thank you. Uh, oh, I have uh, a Marley computer hand raised. Omar, do you have a hand raised? I do. Um, I want to echo the sentiments of the community that uh, would like to move forward with this. I think the community is tired of seeing blight and crime in the community. Um, and so uh, we definitely should move forward with the vote because that's what the community wants. If the community had issue with anything that were presented at the Lakewood level, they would have not voted yes for it. I want to point out that I originally asked to be placed on the Lakewood meeting for two months, and I got a email two hours before the meeting telling me that I was finally going to be able to present. Uh, that is the only reason why we didn't have the renderings at that particular time. Had the email been sent to me two months ago, we would have had that uh, opportunity to do that. But either way, we care for it. The community have voted. They would like for us to do something with their particular building. and one or two people can't overrule a community. One or two people can't speak only on behalf of the community. Uh, the community has spoken with this, and that is all. Thank you. Uh, I move for uh, Gloria Hawkins. Do you have the floor? You the yes, floor? thanks, thanks. Uh, I, again, I, I share the similar sentiments. Um, frankly, there was, uh, we, early 22, we, uh, APS gave us a timeline of when and how the decisions would be made. The timeline durated the entirety of 22. And we were told that by December, there would be a decision made as to whether this property would be uh, would, would be put into, I think the categories called surplus. 
And from December forward, now we have rolled into several other measures. I don't believe there's anyone in this room that um, is wanting this building to remain blighted and undeveloped for the next three to five years. According to the consultants of APS, the consultants essentially said there's the attrition right now we're down a third. Attrition will continue for at least five to seven years. The thrust of it is, um, I don't think anyone's wedded to any particular anything other than blight be gone. And that is my premise that the sooner we can turn that building into a viable, sustainable location, the better off the community will be. Okay, Heather, you have the floor. Yep, um, until tonight, we'd yet to see any site plans or building re renderings. There's no promote proposal I've seen committing to the plans for this building. In last week's meeting, Omar committed to a preschool for early childhood education, and by the end of that conversation, backed into saying it'd be a boys and girls club or something. I'm concerned at the lack of detail we're committing to support as the community. The vote in Lakewood was 17-7, but it's important to note that roughly 10 of those supporting votes were from business representatives in Omar's building. Lastly, Omar has stated that APS is requesting the letter of support. We asked him to provide that communication, and I have not seen it personally. Since the Lakewood meeting, APS Superintendent Dr. Herring has stated, as we've not solicited the Lakewood property nor any of the other 15 properties recently declared surplus, it's premature for the NPU to consider and take action on the property. Regardless of what you want done with the property, we should not be issuing a letter of support until APS has clearly defined the process, which is why I seconded Zach's motion to defer. I'm happy to drop Dr. Herring's email in the chat so people can read it themselves. Thank you, Troy Nunley, you have the floor. Yeah, so the renderings are not, uh, to my, in my opinion, should not be a deciding factor whether to go back to Lakewood because they're just in the idea phase of the renderings. As long as he got the letters of support, then you all can, as Lakewood Communicate, can go back and have the conversations about the renderings if you feel like that is a deciding factor. But as far as Lakewood, uh, as, far, as far as a letter of support is just for continuing negotiations. And then the community can also negotiate with Omar and his constituents to get what you want out of the neighborhood and out of the building. Um, so I don't, I personally don't think it's a deciding factor to, to defer back to the uh, community. Thank you. Jimmy Moore, you have the floor. Yes, uh, I just want to say quickly, I think uh, Omar's time in the community uh, and his, his, um, his, his progress with the, the part of the block that he already owns um, is indicative of what we know he's, he's capable of. And I think that uh, the community's vote is a is a symbol of confidence in, in a, uh, that we believe that he would do right by the community in terms of what the community uh, will want with uh, with that additional space. So again, this is a, a statement of support for uh, Mr. Ali. All right, moving on to you, Jacob Mills, you have your hand raised. Yes, as the uh, zoning co-chair for MPUY, I would just like to emphasize this particular point. This is extremely preliminary. The drawings and the renderings are something that is just put out for this evening. There is a lot of discussion that can be had, but my biggest point that I wanna make is proof of concept. Omar has a building that is directly adjacent to this building and has helped facilitate uh, a new growth on Sawtell and Jonesboro Road, which is something the community desperately needs. Uh, he's literally asking just for a letter of support, which is the community did vote to support this and to, um, you know, the, I can't remember who mentioned this, but the vote being 17 to seven and 10 members being uh, from the building uh, that voted in support, I would, hope that they would vote in support. They are renters uh, from that particular building. And even if you subtracted those 10 votes, you would have still seven to seven. So the community is looking to support this. The developers, like I said, time is of the essence with developers. It costs a lot of money. There's a lot of processes that, that, are, that are a part of this, but this will come back multiple times in front of the MPUY. Uh, there will be multiple conversations had with the Lakewood Heights community uh, regarding this particular development, but I would say 
I'm not sure how the Roberts rules of order work, but it, I, I believe that we should look at something as far as just because it's the first motion on the floor doesn't mean it should be the first motion in the motion that we actually vote on. Uh, I would like right. to- um, you're, you're at time, Jacob. But okay. I was just gonna say that um, the only thing we can do at this point is Zachary can, re he can withdraw his motion. I have, other Rebecca, than that, we have to, we have to vote on it. Yes, so I've, we will we will vote on the motion um, unless- I've had my hand up for a little bit and I just have a quick point about that, if it's okay. We have, we have a couple more hands. You are actually next, okay. Holly, just give me one cool. moment. So the motion that's on the floor, um, unless it is rescinded or amended by those that made the motion, it will move forward. So Kelly, you have the floor. Um, I was just gonna say that Zach was asked to speak for the community and then put a personal motion on the floor. And so I think that's worth considering. No hand was raised separately. That was the time that was given to the community and should have been allotted only for community speaking and not for additional personal motions, um, just as a point of consideration. Um, you know, when discussion is raised and hands are raised and people get in line and a motion is made, that's one thing, but that was time for the community's voice and he used it for his own voice. Um, I would like to just say that um, before I say that I support a lot of the things that have been said by a number of other people, um, but I wanna be clear that when someone is asked to speak for the community and they speak for themselves instead, that that should not be permitted. I do appreciate that. This is why I um, asked for a second recommendation from the parliamentarian. Um, because it was second end, we will move forward with a vote on the deferral. However, um, moving forward, I do appreciate that. Um, I, uh, my, my hand was raised. If, if I could re respond to that directly. Uh, I was uh, Point of order. Point of yep. order. Thank you. As we move forward um, for other order, other votes, um, we will make sure that we consider that up front. Uh, so that way this does not happen again. Zach, your hand is raised after Kelly Petty. So you will be called well, on. Kelly spoke one. already. And so I, I, I haven't had a chance to speak uniquely on this item. I was put on the spot to respond from a question from uh, Devon, but I didn't get a chance to speak. Kelly well, spoke already point on of the, order, point, the point. Chair is, point of order, the chair is ruled that you go to the end Well, of I, I just made another point of order to say that a speaker that has been called on has spoken independently already on the issue before I have, and I'm requesting the opportunity to do so before that speaker. I will allow. Zach Marie, you may have the floor. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I just wanted to respond specifically to Kelly and say that I was speaking on behalf of the community by saying that there were renderings presented tonight to the MPU that were not presented to the community. Omar saying that he requested to speak at our, at our meeting for two months, that request has been met every time. And so it's not an issue of us not giving him enough notice because if the renderings are there, the renderings are there. And so I, I, I don't believe at that point is appropriate the, the motion to defer was so that the community did have an opportunity to review information that's new tonight that wasn't presented to them. That was a motion made specifically on behalf of the community. I wanna to respond to a couple of the points Jacob's making, for example, that says that developer has timeframes that are tight. The developer can't procure financing or so on or contractors, et cetera, until they have site control. And APS has not given any directive about when they're gonna offer site control in the RFP process. So the idea that there's this urgency is a false sense of urgency. We have time to deliberate because that's what APS is providing, is time. The letter of support that folks are indicating tonight and saying that it's just a letter of support, I'm not in denial of, of, of Omar's opportunity. What I'm saying is our community deserves due diligence. We deserve the opportunity to have concrete details about what's being promised by the developer of said property before we're signing on to support. We, when, when the housing authority came to Chosewood Park, there wasn't a vote taken before you all saw what the concept was in concrete detail, the levels of affordability, the ownership percentages, the elevations, et cetera. The other point I wanna to raise tonight is that you all mentioned specifically the school in Chosewood Park that was sold by APS and how the owner of that property hasn't done anything with that property yet. And so in order to effectively do our due diligence to make sure that the blight can be remediated as folks wanna see immediately and as soon as possible, we need to know more concrete details, for example, is the project that's being proposed even financially feasible? We can't know that until there are concrete details about what said developer is attempting to offer on site. And so we are voting prematurely. APS has indicated that themselves in their own correspondence. And I don't understand why folks don't see that, that there's no reason why the community can't continue to deliberate and understand in concrete detail what the developer is attempting to offer. And that's my only point. And offering the deferment is not out of order. It is in fact in order to say that there are new details that the community wasn't presented on that they have a right to see. 
Thank you, Zach. I have two more hands raised and then we will move to vote on a deferral. Ke Kelly Petty, you have your hand raised, you have the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Nicole. Um, just to wrap this up so we can go ahead and vote and approve this letter of support. Um, as Jacob mentioned, this, this is preliminary. This is typical of developers, um, of a developer process um, is to get get support and and get buy-in from the community and then they can go through the process of providing renderings and other things. Omar provided renderings to appease those who were concerned um, and concerned about what he was planning on doing. We're, we are not unintelligent people in the community. We know that, that this is going to be a process. We had no high expectations for him to pr provide detailed renderings. That is something that happens further down in the process. And frankly, at the end of the day, APS has the full discretion to choose who they want because there's money in this for them. And they know that when they sell off a property. All this, all this letter does is show that there is a trusted person in the community that has sh shown, demonstrated success in what they've in uh, developing buildings or developing properties and that as a community we trust his process and we want to give him a letter of support at the end of the day we could go through all this subterfuge and APS say we're going to go with another developer we just want to give him our our letter of support behind it and I'm just asking let's go ahead and close this out finish this conversation so we can vote and move on thank you Nicole thank you I know that Rebecca Robinson has her hand raised in order to call to question so we will go ahead and move with the first motion on the floor. The first motion on the floor is to defer. Uh, so right. The motion in the poll is open. The motion is to defer. If so so explain that defer means not to move forward with the uh, voter support, correct? Correct. So it would defer you to the next month's meeting unless you choose to go to a future meeting after that. Um, and, if vote, and if we vote no tonight, then will we have an option to make another motion? Yes, there is. It would stay on the floor as a presentation on the agenda. So let me make sure I'm understanding. So a vote no would be contra the motion to defer. Is that correct? Correct. No would keep it on the floor for another motion. Well, Madam Chair, I will be putting mine in the chat as a host, of course. Thank you. I appreciate that. All those that are co-hosts, please place your, your vote in the chat. Anybody that has multiple people in their Zoom account, please place your vote in the chat with your full name. We'll keep it open for just one more moment. All right, I am closing the chat or closing the poll. My apologies. I, I, I didn't get the poll. Did it come through? Uh, if you'd like to put your, um, your motion or sorry, your vote in the chat, we will count that there and I, we will verify all of the votes through the results. Okay. As I share the results, we have five in the poll, two in the chat for yes for deferral, with seven. We have 25 no and three in the chat. So it is 28 for a no for deferral. And I have four for abstention of a deferral. I do have one more in the um, poll, or sorry, in the chat for a deferral, for a no for deferral. Um, and at the time the poll is completely closed. So that does put us at no for a deferral. So this will not be deferred, it is still on the floor. Can, Can I put a motion board? to support the letter of support for Omar Ali to develop Lakewood Heights Elementary School? Second, okay. Kelly Jean. Motion is on the floor. I raise my hand first, man, y'all mad at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion is on the floor and seconded. So we are going to do I'm sorry, hold on one moment. We have a, one in the chat. This post from his eligibility. Yes, we will. Give me one moment and I will download it so that I can drop it in the chat. Hmm. 
Madam Chair, what I've got is the motion for deferral is still up in front of me. Uh, yeah, because I had to pull it back up in order to oh, okay. um, re pull the motion. Okay. okay. Pull the results, that is. <clears throat> so the motion on the floor, I do have two hands raised. Let me go ahead with those hands before we open a poll. Uh, Russell, do you still have your hand raised? Russell Hobson, do you need the floor? No, sorry. <laughs> Troy Nunnally, you have the floor. Uh, Troy, you are muted. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, one more thing uh, as far as discussion is that the renderings that he mentioned as well as the letter of support does fall in line with the level of LCI that was voted on by both the community, the MPU and the city in the state of Georgia. And also it falls in line with the CDP uh, for, you know, for purposes is the future land use says that it should be medium density uh, residential. Uh, however, since it is contiguous to other mixed use density, then is that also could be a consideration like he mentioned. So uh, this does, his most, what he mentioned in his presentation does fall in line with uh, the Lakewood LCI uh, and the MPU policies, as well as has been, of course, voted for uh, approval of support for in the, by the community as well. But I just wanted to mention that as well, just by just showing the history of what's been going with this. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, so we will go ahead and open up the poll system. Again, it will come up on your screen. You may vote in that way or add your vote in the chat. Um, we will go through these. Uh, as this is the last item on our agenda, um, there may be a change to the vote after the meeting uh, and it will be announced through our minutes uh, to clarify if there were any ineligible voters on the chat or in the poll. Uh, as we keep this open for a moment, I do want to make some clarity on this. Yes, APS has not made their decision on how the process will be followed. If there are additional processes that um, any letter of support must require or for their uh, proposal would need to follow up with an MPU or community, they will have to come back before those neighborhoods and community uh, meetings. Additionally, this is not the only letter of support that can be submitted for this property. If anybody else, another developer comes forth, um, there are multiple letters of support that the MPU may be able to present to developers. I'll leave this open for just another moment. All right, I am closing the chat or closing the poll. All right, so I have 25 in the poll for an approval with three in the chat, so there's 28. I have three no's with one in the chat, so it is four no's, and I have five abstentions. Uh, the vote motion carries to approve a letter of support at this time. Uh, and I, if you weren't unable to receive the poll, uh, please just leave it in the chat, um, although we have closed the poll at this time. All right, the vote will be closed at this time. Um, so the motion carries as a support for a letter of support. Madam Chair, I'm not sure if you're aware, but several yeses have cropped up on the screen since closing the poll, are you aware? Yes, so we will count the two additions that are in there um, as we just officially closed in the chat, just to make sure that everybody feels that they are, have a voice heard during these polls because the poll system is new to us. So we do not want to disclude anybody as we go through this process. And I noticed there's several two persons on the screen and if we further reiterated that there's some method for recording both votes, did we? Yes, we have. We've said that multiple times that they were to place it in the chat with a full name. Uh, Omar Ali, you have your hand raised. Uh, yes, I just wanted to 
thank the community again for the vote of confidence as we continue to develop the Lakewood. Um, everyone know that I have an open door policy. You will see me at the Lakewood building um, three or four times a week. Don't hesitate to stop me, give me your ideas. I greatly appreciate the continued support of the community. And Nicole, thank you for uh, handling this um, in such a um, elegant and uh, professional manner. Thank you. My pleasure to have you on here. We do handle all of our meetings through Robert Susan order. The proper procedure went through DCP. Um, and while APS may seem that it is uh, preemptive at this time, uh, the motion did carry on the floor to go ahead and move forward. Uh, Heather, I see your hand raised. Can you please drop the updated chat record and or vote record in the chat, please? Thank I you. Am, yep, absolutely. I'm trying to do that right now. It does take a moment to do that because I do have to download it. And uh, if I try to do too much on one screen, Zoom does lock on me. So <laughs> it takes a moment to uh, clarify some of the- No, comments. you're all good. I just want to make sure we get it. And then Kelly Jean, if you can submit the approved the list of voters, that'd be appreciated as well. Thank you. Yep, we will get that sorted out after the meeting for it. Uh, moving on to the next agenda item is our planner's report. We do have a new city planner. It is uh, Elizabeth Clappen. I hope that said that right. It is. Hi, folks. Um, nothing to report for the planner's report tonight, but I uh, just wanted to say it's a pleasure to be here with um, NPUY. Um, some very stimulating conversation. You guys definitely gave me an exciting meeting for my first meeting with you, uh, but you can expect to see me uh, every third Monday from here on out. And uh, any questions, I will um, drop my contact information in the chat. Appreciate it. We thank you. Are there any questions for our city planner? As I see no hands raised, I appreciate you coming out. And yes, this is Oh, Jacob Mills, you have your hand raised. You have the floor. What is your view on the Atlanta 2.0? <laughs> wait, 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 what? Jen. You could start with asking, what is the 2.0? <laughs> no, I, I mean, <laughs> that's uh, that was going to be my first comment, is that that is a very broad question, and in what context? <laughs> it is a very broad question. Uh, yeah, that's, it, it's tough. I just, I, I wanted to hear a little bit of the city's idea on what direction they plan on going uh, as far as density goes for single family lots. And this is coming from the MPUI, uh, you know, zoning uh, co-chair and, and, and Bob would, mm -hmm. would say the same. Um, if you could just kind of give us any update on what you guys foresee uh, the, the zoning ordinance is moving into what direction? It's an excellent question. And for those of you who may be unaware, um, the city is right now doing a, a massive um, reconsideration of our zoning code. Um, we are at this point, I believe, two thirds of the way through public comment on that. So I would recommend highly that you look at the events you take the opportunity to comment where you can, if you have strong feelings, either way, if you have concerns. But my, my short answer to that would be, is I think that at this point, we are still in the information gathering stage because it is largely the responsibility of the Department of City Planning to consider the data, to consider what people's major concerns are and to use that information moving forward to inform which, if any, changes are made to the upcoming zoning code. Because obviously a lot of our codes are out of date. The city is changing rapidly. And this is in response to that, in response to trying to plan forward. But my major responsibility would be right now, we are still at the information gathering phase. And that's the reason that we don't rewrite code overnight. Could you put the information in the chat so that people can be aware of the next meeting that is coming up in February? Uh, I believe it's, you know, only a few days from now. Correct. Yes, it is in the upcoming week. I will absolutely do that for you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. My it's pleasure. By, it's by Zoom conference as well, right? Correct. It is. Yes. Mike Murray, you have the floor. Yes, on Zoning Reform 2.0, I really think the only thing that they've really done to get user input is to um, put out that survey. But the survey had very complicated items on it, like string zoning, FAR, which very few people really understand. So 
I don't think that particular. And then in the second meeting, the the communications was wrong. No one could hear the speaker where they went over that um, survey, but no one understood what the results were because we couldn't hear the guy. And, you know, I do not think the survey was done very scientifically. It was not done in a way people could actually give their their opinion with, with, with any intelligence. And a third problem is this, this particular zoning reform is starting using the Atlanta, the Atlanta design plan housing study, which says that the the forecast for 2050 is is 1.22 million people, when in fact the ARC, which is really the 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 group that does forecasts, says it's 800,000. So, so I think we're starting off on the wrong foot. I really think they, they ought to discontinue this process and restart it, Thank and you, Paul. not Paul. not. Go ahead not rely on consultants, but have more people in the community on the board um, de deciding the the agenda. The agenda is totally de decided by, by the planning department. All right, thank you, Paul. Since that, there is a lot that our city planner cannot do when it comes to some of that information, <laughs> um, we will allow her to have some information that um, there is opposition to how the process is being handled. And hopefully if you have any additional information you would like to email out to her to relate to the appropriate departments and personnel, please do that directly. Um, thank you all. If you have any other questions for the city planner, please uh, raise your hand at this time. All right, as I see none, we will motion. Thank you. To <laughs> Thank you. And I wanted to let you know that you're all of the comments that you just made, I didn't know, but please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. Uh, I will motion to adjourn. Second, Rebecca. Third. As a second, we will be doing this as a slate vote as earlier. So if you are in opposition of adjournment, please raise your hand or speak up now. All right, we are adjourned at 911. My apologies for going over. Thank you all so much for joining and participating with our community. Um, this is how we get things done is by our Robert's Rules of Order and Democratic Process. So I thank you for taking the time to come to our meetings and voicing your opinion. You all have a great night. Nicole, can you?